Yo, welcome back to my channel and in today's video we're gonna learn how to make a flag with some wind because I just put that in one of my games and I wanted to show you guys, you know, how I did that. So, if you're ready to learn, let's get it. First thing that you would need is a flag and where are you gonna get that from? Most times you'd have to model that because, you know, I'm or you can find it on the internet, but let's model it. Let's go to Blender and let's model it real quick. So press uh, Shift A to add a mesh. We'll add a plane. We'll make sure this plane is stood up. So R Y ninety uh, G Z to move it up. And now let's make it into the shape of a flag. So S Y. Oh, that looks like a flag to me. Okay. Next thing is that this flag needs some materials on it because it can't just be a blank flag. So let's put some materials on it with this pink globe. Press new. You can make it a certain color if you want to. But for me, I'm going to make it an image texture. And I've already made an image. Now, this part you might not have, but I want this to be my flag. Or this could be my flag, but I'm going to put the Q. Oh, no, it's sideways. So how do we fix that? Right click right here on this line right here. And then vertical split. Now, I'll change this to UV. And on this left side, press edit mode, which is tab. And then on the right side, now you can fix it. So press A and R, 90. And look at it, it just fixed it perfect. Now we can join the areas back together. And look at that, we've got a nice little flag. The only part about this though is now we need to press A in edit mode and right click and subdivide. And then 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 subdivide. <laughs> Do it a whole bunch of times, you know what I'm saying? Do as much as you, your computer can handle. You don't really have to do it that that many times, but you want your flag to be able to move. So now that this flag is good, we can um, go ahead and export it. So file, export, FBX. You don't have to do anything special here. Just make sure it's the mesh and the selected, selected object. Put it on your desktop or wherever you put your stuff at. Export. Now let's bring it into Unreal. So... When we bring it into Unreal Engine, I'm using 5.3, by the way. There's a bug that I've encountered uh, when you're importing skeletal meshes with morph, morph targets. Um, this one doesn't necessarily have any morph targets, but let me go ahead and show you how to get rid of that bug, just in case you are doing morph targets. So what you want to do is press, uh, let's find a folder for our flag. So here's a flag folder I've made, and then we're going to import with this button here now in the bottom right we want skeletal meshes so come down here and say FBX skeletal mesh then find your flag that you just made mine is called Q flag I believe right here and then you open it and it should open with no problems however when we get to this import screen we need to make sure we select skeletal mesh and then import all It'll load, it'll load, and then we'll let's see it. All right, there's our flag. So when we double click on the purple, all right, so when you double click on the purple, let me show you. There's a purple, there's a orange, and there's a blue, right? Uh, there's also a red here for the texture. But the purple is the skeletal mesh, and this is what we need to double click on. As of right now, you can't see the other side of the flag. So from the skeletal mesh here, we'll click on this materials. And while this material is selected, down on the left-hand side, let's press two-sided and save. Then we go back to our flag, and we need to make this into a flag. So it needs to be able to like move like a flag. So the first thing we need to do is right-click it um, and create clothing data from section. Now, if you don't have this clothing tab up here, press Windows um, and then press Clothing, and this tab will appear. But anyways, when I right click and I say create clothing from section, I press create. Then I notice that my clothing appeared here, or my flag appeared here. Now with that selected, I can paint this flag or which parts of it I want to move by pressing activate cloth paint. When I press this, everything that's pink is not going to be moving. So now I get the color by holding and clicking on the parts of the flag that I want to move. Now, flags usually are connected on the left hand side over here so actually let's go ahead and fix that 
before we continue painting, um, take come over here on the left hand side in the details. The paint value is at 100 right now. Let's set that to like 1,000. 500, 900, whatever. Just higher than 100. But 1,000 here, and I'm going to paint it again. And then let's see if I can make this brush smaller. Uh, the brush size, which would be here, radius, 128. Let's make that smaller so I can do this here. Say that. Remember, in the pink areas is where it's going to be connected to, whatever we connect it to. Those are the areas that are not going to move. Um, so now, in order to make this correct, everything is straight. We deactivate cloth paint. And nothing's moving. In order for it to move, right click back on your skeletal mesh and apply the clothing data that you just made. And then, once it applies, <laughs> your flag will come through like that. Now, there's a couple things here that you may notice. Um, I don't like this. So if you want to get it more precise, you can click on the left hand side where it says cloth configs down here in the simulation part. And you can increase your iterations or your subdivision count. Now we subdivided it a whole lot in the other software, but I'm going to still increase the subdivision to something higher. Something that, see now that makes it way cooler. It slows down the simulation a bit. So let me do like five or something like that. There you go, that's better. And save. Now that we've got our flag working and we've got our material working, we could put the flag on a pole. So let's X out of these and let's go ahead and create a pole with a cylinder. Make it really tall. <laughs> and then make it smaller. In the, uh, so like a pole size, right? Oops. There we go. And then we'll move it over here. All right, so we got a pole. Now, usually on the pole, there's a ball at the top. So let's go ahead and put that little sphere at the top of the pole. Um, I don't know what the purpose of these things are, but this is just how I see the nature. You know what I'm saying? This is what I see, so I make what I see. You can make the ball a little bit smaller, and then you center it up the right way. But anyways, make the ball. For me, I'm going to make it gold. If you don't have gold, that means you didn't add starter content into your project. And also, I'm going to make the pole chrome. Oh, yeah. So now we've got a nice big... <laughs> Look at that big-ass ball up there. All right, let's... let's um, I don't, That's kind of visually fucked up. Let me fix that. All right, that's better. Now, what we need to do is we need to add our flag. So, content, grab your flag, drag it out into the world, and remember which way that you had it anchored. So, for me, mine was this way. Um, let me go ahead and put it 90 degrees and put it right there inside the pole right there and then to the right over here da! and there's my flag the flag of Q right and if I press simulate now watch what's gonna happen my flag is flagging but it's like ew why is it Where's the wind at, right? <laughs> we need wind. So let's put some wind. Wind. So on your place actors over here, if you don't have that, press this button and then press place actors panel. And then just type in wind. And you're going to find wind directional source. Now, the wh wherever the blue arrow is pointing, not that blue arrow, the light skin blue arrow, wherever that one's pointing, that's the way the wind's going to be blowing. So since it is pointing that way, cool. But since it's, since it's going that way, all you need to do now is increase the strength, or the speed, I'm sorry, of the wind. So let's change the speed of the wind to like, I don't know, 20? 13? 13. 13 is a good number. And then let's press play. And now you've got your flag blowing in the wind. I mean, that's pretty much all I wanted to cover for this tutorial. If you have any questions, comments, or like, you're like, yo, you're going way too fast, dude. You just put it in the comment section and I'll help you out. Um, but that's, that's literally how you make a flag. You can do a lot more cool stuff with it, but that's the simple version. So thanks, y'all. Hope you have a great day. And I'll holla at y'all in the next one.